guys, I'm Laura and this is Robin and we are the team behind FijiPocketGuide.com and today we're going to be doing a video about the 30 essential tips for travelling in Fiji so you can start planning your holiday to paradise. Alright, so before we get started, I invite you guys to click on the link on the top of these videos. It's a link to FijiPocketGuide.com and all articles on the 30 tips to travel in Fiji. It looks like this one right here and we're going to be going through that together with going every single tips one by one, making sure that you guys can follow along the way. We're going to be discussing every single one of those tips, but there's plenty of links and everything and that is going to be so much easier for you guys if you actually kind of follow along with us as we're going through all those tips. So I'll give you a bit of a minute right here to go post this video, click on that link, make sure that it's open, maybe get it on your phone, get it started. It's loaded. Is it, is it ready now? I think, I think you guys are ready. Okay, let's get started with tip number one. Okay, the number one thing to know about going to Fiji is that you need to get used to Fiji time. This is a phrase that you will hear over and over again from the moment you step onto the plane to go to Fiji and probably until you hit the souvenir shops in the airport on the way out. Now you keep saying it even when you're back home. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Fiji time, basically, this is um, a thing that locals say a lot, just as a really proud thing as well, because everything is so relaxed in Fiji, meaning that things just sort of happen when they happen. They're not really into set schedules, being on time or rushing for things. So if you have, say, a tour, be aware that sometimes things may go off the itinerary or things might take a little bit longer than used to. If you plan to meet someone at a certain time, they may be a little bit late. So just be aware that Fiji time is a real thing and just you just need to relax and embrace Fiji time. Exactly. <laughs> All right, tip number two, it's exploring all the islands. I mean, not all the islands because Fiji is made up of 333 different islands and that makes for a really busy week rather than a relaxing one. But get to explore the island. So the main island of Fiji is Viti Levu. It's probably where you're going to be landing in Nandi International Airport. But there are many different islands and especially a lot of really popular island groups such as the Mamanustas, the Yasawas, um, Tabeuni and even Vanua Levu. So there is a lot of different places you can go to and you can go to them in many different ways. You can do a day cruise, which means you're just going to hop from your resort, uh, hop on the boat and then you just go to a couple of islands, go snorkels, go see some cocktail on different beach. Um, you know, this is where you're going to get all your like turquoise blue pictures uh, of, of, of water and, and golden sand beach and coconut trees. And you know, it looks like paradise. This is, this is what's going to happen during those kind of day tours. You can also hop on like um, uh, cruises that goes alongside many different islands. You can get some different passes and you can range from like three days to almost two weeks sometimes. Um, you can also take a helicopter flight, a plane flight. There's so many different ways to explore so many different islands. It would be a shame if you went to Fiji and only stayed on the main island. So make sure that you have at least one day excursion in one of the islands. Absolutely. So number three on our list is Fiji is more than just sitting by the pool. Now, what people mostly know about Fiji is that it has some really awesome resorts, which it does, and we'll definitely get onto that later. But people underestimate how much there actually is to do in this country. You can do all sorts of adventure activities like skydiving, whitewater rafting, jet boating, zip lining. There's loads of different hikes you can do. There's scuba diving, there's swimming with sharks. Um, I'm sure I've missed out a million things. There's cultural visits, village visits, lots of really hands-on and um, like crafting activities you can do. So honestly, you will probably only want to spend some days by the pool, like a couple of days, but there's so much to do. And make sure you check out the activities category on Fiji Pocket Guide to actually get a taste of all the things there is to do in Fiji. Yeah, there's not just a hike between the pool bar and the restaurant bar. Yeah, there's, all, there's all the things. <laughs> yeah. All right, so number four, um, our tip is that Fiji is actually really great for kids. 
A lot of people are a bit worried about bringing kids to Fiji, but Fiji is actually really well equipped for kids, plus Fijians love kids. So Fijian people really do like kids, so don't be afraid if they kind of come closer to your kids or kind of like, you know, um, are, are extremely friendly, way friendlier than what you used to back home with the kids. Um, and also, the kids are going to really love their time in Fiji. There are some amazing kids club in many different resorts. I mean, really stunning um, kids club where they do activities all the time, both educational and fun. You know, they can make boats out of like, coconut shells and they can, uh, you know, then they race them. And then they, there's also those kind of, um, it's not really snorkel, but it's like, uh, how, how do you call those things where you have a bath with like all the different kind of like, coral and fish and everything? Oh yeah, like, like touch tank and Yeah, touch like tanks. Yeah. Those kind of things which are, you know, really great. So uh, there's a lot of amazing kids club. That means that you as a parent, you're going to have plenty of time to yourself um, without feeling guilty that your kids are not having fun or without forcing your kids to do something that they don't want to do. So I think it's an amazing compromise. It's just perfect. And uh, yeah, Fiji is awesome for kids. Fiji is really awesome for kids. Yeah. But on that note, also bear in mind that Fiji isn't just full of kids. Um, obviously, because there's a lot of really awesome family resorts, some people might be thinking, oh, maybe I don't want to go to a resort where there's a lot of noise and a lot of kids running around. And that definitely doesn't have to be the case. First of all, some of the largest resorts in Fiji do have different areas, like adult-only areas, where obviously kids aren't allowed, and these areas are usually very quiet and peaceful. They have their own pools, bars, even restaurants sometimes. So you can definitely find areas to get away from kids if you feel that you need to. Um, and also on top of that, there are actually adult-only resorts in Fiji where they're exclusively for people over the age of 18, I think, or 16 years old most of the time. So definitely you can, if you are really worried about kids being around, there's definitely ways to make sure that that doesn't happen. And on top of that, the more off the beaten track you go, it, for instance, going really to the outer islands, maybe some of the Yasawa Islands or Kadabu or the Lao group, for instance, this is where families don't really tend to want to travel too far with their kids. So that's also a good way to escape kids as well. All right, so if you're still following with us on the article of the 30 tips, we're on number six right now. And whatever Laura was talking about, plenty of links about that <laughs> as well. All right, so number six tip is learn a few uh, Fijian words and Fijian pronunciations as well. So it sounds really funny saying, you know, coming from a guy which uh, speaks English with a strong French accent, but it's quite important to know a few things, um, you know, to say, especially to the locals. So the first word you're going to be learning is bula. So bula means hello. Um, the other uh, word that you need to know is vinaka, which means thank you. And um, pronunciation wise, um, there is a few kind of tweaks uh, that, uh, to the Fijian language, which is quite interesting. So you're not going to land in Nadi Airport or Nadi Airport or anything like that. It's Nandi. So a, a word that will have a D in the middle kind of has an N just before the D. So that means in Nandi, like like Nando's, but, but like think about multiple Nando's restaurants. <laughs> but basically that's what it is. Anyway, so yeah, so um, I learned a few, a few of those and we have an article on, on Fiji Pocket Guide, you know, again, if you're following with us, there's a link right here. And uh, yeah, just learn a couple of things so you can, you know, you can show off to, to the locals as well and be like, you know, I, I'm interested in your culture. It's, it's always nice. Yeah. So number seven on the list is pack right for Fiji. So Fiji is a tropical country with temperatures that average around 18 degrees Celsius throughout the year. And that's 64 degrees Fahrenheit if you are in America. And uh, so you do need to pack a tropical wardrobe, you know, your shorts, t-shirts, sort of light, light gear that's not going to make you too warm but do bear in mind that on an evening you probably want something to cover up just in case uh, sometimes the winds can be a little bit choppy off you or if you're doing boat trips and usually if the wind's on you that's might be a good time to just have a light extra layer to put on um, but probably the main thing to note about what you need to pack for Fiji is that when you're leaving your resort, usually if you're going to villages or even into some of the towns around Fiji, um, you need to cover your knees. Um, it's usually, well, it's a sort of 
inappropriate to wear really short shorts or short skirts. Um, I think for both men and women in some cases. It's okay in the resort, but yes. it's not okay in the village. So, yeah, exactly. So what people usually do in Fiji is they wear something called sulus, which is otherwise a sarong, um, and just have that handy to wrap around you if you are leaving the resort or doing a quick village visit with a tour or something. Um, and if you don't have a sarong at home, then at least you can definitely pick up some in the souvenir and gift sh stores and the markets around Fiji. Pretty easy. No one has big them up all the time. Yes, I do have quite a few sarongs now. Um, <laughs> or sulus. So yeah, so definitely that's one thing to be really aware of, of what to pack. And we do have a full packing list on Fiji Pocket Guide, so make sure to check that out as well. All right, so moving on to tip number eight. Um, Fiji can be either really expensive or really cheap and everything in between as well. So I'm gonna give you a few examples. Um, accommodation wise, you can find something really, really basic, roughing it, um, you know, really roughing it for about uh, 15 Fijian dollars a night. And you can also find some amazing hotel nights for like 1,500 and up. Uh, per night and everything in between so really you can find all type of things it's a bit of a myth that Fiji you know is really expensive to travel to um, one of the biggest tips that we always give people when they want to actually kind of stick a little bit to a budget and also try uh, a few of the real uh, kind of local cuisine um, is to actually don't always not always eat in your resort so in your resort your meal is going to cost you between 30 to 70 Fijian dollars um, you know per, per main so which can add up quite quickly to an expensive trip to Fiji. But if you get out of the resort, um, you'll find really amazing meal for eight to 15 Fijian dollars in local restaurants. And it's, it really shows that in resorts, every kind of old, all the prices and everything is, diff is cute. And it's much more, um, you're much better off actually just getting an experience something else. It's convenient in the resort, you get some really amazing cuisine and, and really often it's worth it because you get some really amazing experience. Um, so, but, but don't do it for the entire, for your entire stay in Fiji, do some, you know, some variety. And if you're planning on traveling in some of the smaller islands, um, kind of just gather a bit of information. We, we do mention them often on Fiji Pocket Guide. If um, there are actually other ways to find food, if you go to some of the Wayasawas Island and you're in a resort, that's the only thing on the island. So that's the only thing you're going to be able to eat. Unless you can crack open a coconut yourself. Yeah. Which I, <laughs> I, 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 that's pretty challenging. I, I can do now, <laughs> but man, it's a workout. Uh, so yeah, so it's a big workout. Anyway, so yeah, so keep that in mind when you travel around uh, Fiji. Think about how you, you know, what you're going to eat, uh, what kind of snacks you want. Snacks are so expensive along the way, especially in resort when you're back on the island. So if you can't live without your snacks, pack a few. So um, yeah, keep that in mind, Fiji can be super cheap or super expensive and it's all about the choice you're making. Okay, number nine on the list, which actually follows on from that, is be a savvy consumer. So this is pretty basic, but Fiji does have its own currency, which is the Fijian dollar, so do make sure that you get some of those. It's usually better to um, convert your money once you actually arrive in Fiji. That tends to be when you get the better rates, so try and do that as soon as you arrive in Fiji. Um, a lot of the places like the resorts and in the main cities will accept credit cards, just a good thing to note. Um, but also be aware that there are a few taxes in terms of just buying everyday items in Fiji. For instance, there's VAT, um, which is like a government tax, like a goods and services tax on um, just goods and services. <laughs> um, also, if you're staying in hotels or eating at hotels or using any hotel services that you need to pay for, then there is a hotel turnover tax, which is called the HTT, and that will be added to your receipt as well. So just be aware that there are a few little niggly taxes here and there, which we will also have an article on Fiji Pocket Guide, so make sure to check out the link on our 30 Tips article. All right, so number 10 is uh, about tipping. So we stick with the kind of the budget realm right here, but we're gonna quickly move on. Um, but tipping, last thing, um, do not feel like you have to tip uh, for every single service, every single meal that you're getting. Tipping is not mandatory, it's not part of the culture in Fiji. It's obviously very much appreciated, so uh, your waitress or, or you know, your, uh, your taxi driver and everybody would be really happy to receive a tip from you, but it's not part of the culture, you don't necessarily have to, um, so it's welcomed, but it's not mandatory, so keep that in mind and stick to tipping when you receive exceptional customer service. 
Okay, number 11 on the list is that cultural experiences are pretty easy to find in Fiji. Um, just by being in Fiji, you really get to experience the culture every single day. But there are two different types of main cultures in Fiji. There's the Fijian culture, which is more the Pacific Islander culture, and there's the Indo-Fijian culture as well. Um, so usually within the towns and, and the bigger cities is where you will find more of the Indo-Fijian culture, where you can find some amazing restaurants, you can experience really awesome festivals that are in the Indian culture as well. So that's where you'll get that side of the culture. And then you get the opportunity to do village visits to, and also um, do like cover ceremonies and lots of crafting sort of activities in and around the resorts um, and that's a good way to experience the Fijian culture. So usually you don't actually have to go too far to actually find something authentic because really the culture around is really authentic and it doesn't really, it's not very often that it feels like a show or feels too fake if you know what I mean. I agree. Yeah. Alright, so tip number 12 um, is don't expect too much to happen on a Sunday. So uh, Fijians are extremely religious um, and the largest kind of uh, religion in Fiji is Christianism and they respect the Sunday day of rest as scrupulously. Um, you know, expect almost everything to be closed on a Sunday. The only thing that's going to be open is going to be the resort. So that's going to be when you're going to eat in your resort. That's going to be when most of the activities are just going to happen in the resort and nothing else really happens. So just if you have, if you want to plan some excursion or some things to do, don't target Sundays because it's going to be really, really, really quiet. Now, on the other hand, it's uh, if you are keen to go uh, to church and actually check out, um, you know, really pious people at work, uh, meaning, uh, you know, seeing them pray and sing and everything, it's really awesome and uh, you're very much welcome to do so if you obviously wear the appropriate outfit, which is for both men and women uh, below the knee. So uh, Laura was mentioning about the Sulu, so that's for men and women, um, as well as, uh, you know, kind of cover the shoulders as well, uh, just because, well, you know, it's going to church you've got to dress appropriately yes exactly okay number 13 on the list is most water in Fiji is safe to drink but dot 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 <laughs> um, some water especially on the outer islands are not particularly safe to drink or at least even the, the locals might drink it because it, it might be from spring water or rainwater and they're sort of used to that. But if you're not used to that sort of thing, then it is definitely best to make sure that you have some precautions in place. What we recommend is this trusty little life straw bottle, which has actually been a, a savior for us when we've been traveling around the South Pacific Islands. And it has this really awesome, um, it has a carbon filter and others and another type of filter as well, which gets rid of 99.99999% of, um, of bacteria in the water. So if you don't have time to, for instance, boil the water or you don't have, you know, the means of other way, otherwise getting um, safe drinking water, then that is an awesome way to go about it. And also that um, stops you from having to buy bottled water all the time, which first of all can be super expensive on the outer islands. Um, and second of all, it is really atrocious for the environment, so we don't really want that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah so, uh, the life straw bottles is definitely a good way to go if you are unsure about the water. I'm just going to mention that we are not sponsored by life straw whatsoever. They do not give us any money to say that. We just really leave yeah. through those things every time we go to the South Pacific, so we do really like it. Yeah. We put a link to it um, to the probably Amazon page because that's easier to get it there. We put a link to the Amazon page uh, in this uh, the description of the video and there's also one in obviously the article if you're kind of following us uh, through on the articles. Speaking of that, we are moving on to number 14 on the article which is keeping yourself safe and the environment safe. So on top of trying to avoid all the bottled water, there's other ways that you can stay safe and keep your environment safe. So the main thing is, uh, for example, sunscreen. There are a lot of different sunscreen which are super chemical, super harsh for your skin, super harsh for the local coral and the environment, and it's really bad for everybody, basically. So we usually use uh, natural sunscreen, which have ingredients, um, in ingredients which are just much better for yourself, for the skin. It's more like moisturizer and everything like that. We find them, they're usually much easier to actually apply on as well. Um, they just, basically, they, the only thing is that they're slightly bit more expensive, but we haven't seen really any 
downside to using uh, sunscreen which are you know reef safe and, and natural so that's what we usually do um, same thing if you're following us with the article right here you have a full article right here on the best environmentally friendly sunscreen and they're not just good for the environment they're good for your skin as well the same thing applies for insect repellents um, Fiji has a few mosquitoes so you may want to pack an insect repellent and uh, one of the main ingredients in the chemical insect repellent is called DEET Detail. I don't really know how you're supposed yeah. to say it, but it's really harsh and really bad, especially for kids. So we have a list of um, DEET free insect repellent, which are great for Fiji. And we have that on the side as well, just to help you make the right choice. And you know, just kind of keep the mosquitoes at bay, but also just not, you know, slowly kill yourself, yeah. which is, you know, it's always <laughs> better. Yeah. So number 15 on the list is be ready for Fiji's biosecurity. Now this is often something that people have loads of questions on. What can they bring into Fiji? What's prohibited? Um, well, the thing to know is that when you do arrive in Fiji, you will be given a passenger arrival card where you'll be asked if you have certain things packed in your bags and you need to declare it by ticking yes or say you haven't packed it and tick no. Um, and because the list is quite extensive, because it covers things like vegetable matter, seeds, animal products, um, we do have an article on Fiji Pocket Guide which actually lists all the things that you need to declare when arriving in Fiji. Um, so that also is very helpful to look at before you pack your bags, just in case you have to surrender anything you might not want to surrender, for instance. Um, and make sure that if you're unsure about anything, it's always best to declare it anyway. Um, otherwise, if they find something in your bags that you didn't declare, you can receive an instant fine, which isn't very fun. So just be aware of that. All right, so we are halfway through, guys. Number 16, travel in the shoulder season to avoid the crowd. Now, Fiji in the main season can be really, really busy. So you may want to try to avoid that and get a place all to yourself. Well, not really all to yourself, but, you know, get much more room for yourself. So the busy season in Fiji runs from July to September. Um, and the sugar season, what we call the sugar season, means that it's still very close to the busy season. So you still have um, the good weather. So the good weather in Fiji is winter. This is when it's drier and uh, when there's you know less rain, basically. Um, and it's still, it's still really hot. Like I mean, winter in Fiji is still really hot, right? Um, so if you get close to that, so if for example you're traveling in April, May, June, or if you're traveling in October, November, that's kind of the month that we usually target, you will find that usually you get much better deals, so things are much cheaper. Um, we're talking accommodation and flight, especially food prices doesn't really change. Um, and also uh, you will find that there is much less people, which is also super enjoyable. Um, and, and so yeah, usually that's our favorite time of the year to travel. So July to September is the busy time of the year. Our favorite time to travel is April, May, June, or uh, October to mid-November. All right, number 17 on the list is check which seasons your uh, bucket list activities are actually available. Um, one of the main activities that a lot of people like to do in Fiji, for instance, is swim with manta rays, which is absolutely amazing. But this is only available really at certain times of the year, particularly between May and October. So that's just one of the main things to be aware of for Fiji and actually making sure you're traveling there at the right time of the year for what you want to do. Other things might be fishing, although you can do fishing all year round in Fiji. There are certain fish that's obviously best to target at certain times of the year. And we do have articles on FijiPocketGuide.com saying when is the best time to target particular or specific fish around Fiji. Um, another thing to note also is that some of the waterfalls aren't as perhaps beautiful at certain times of the year compared to others. There's a very famous waterfall near Nandi called the Orchid Waterfall which in the um, in the dry season which is in between July and September this is when it's not usually as beautiful and full of water flowing because it isn't raining as much but outside of this season you're more likely to have a beautiful waterfall shot for instance so just be aware that not everything is available all year round all right so tip number 18 is to consider all your options for getting around so getting around Fiji is actually incredibly easy. There are so many ways to go around. There's ferries, boats, planes, um, helicopters, and uh, you can also rent a car, even hire a driver, take a bus, there's a lot to do. So um, 
obviously you won't be able to take a bus from one island to the other um, i'm just gonna point that out straight away but if we take the example of the main island of Viti Levu it has a lot to offer and you can go around most of the island by bus you can even hire a taxi you don't necessarily have to hire a taxi for you know point A to point B you can hire a taxi for an entire day and um, it has uh, usually a flat cost and you agree with that, that, that taxi driver and then you have a driver that's going to drive you around and wait for you when you do a few things which is super handy Ron and I have done that many times and it sometimes get cheaper you know end up being cheaper than even renting a car um, renting a car also is very popular in Fiji you can rent a car with most driver license for most of the world um, and yeah it's pretty easy to drive around Fiji if you ever drove around a pothole and uh, know how to avoid a pothole <laughs> but obviously you probably do um, so yeah, so there's many different ways to go around Fiji and a lot of people just kind of think they're going to be staying in the resort app for the whole time. It's not, it's not the case, you, can, you have so many options. Plus, on top of it, a lot of resorts have free shuttle that will take you to like a resort around the Naro or, uh, or Nandi, for example, will take you to the Naro or to you know, Denaro Island and to, um, to Nandi Town and then back and forth. There are shuttles going all, all, all day long. So you can organize that quite easily. So think about uh, how you want to travel around. And uh, if you're unsure about, uh, about how you want to do it, head to the transportation section of FijiPocketGuide.com. So right on top of the menu, there is transport. And you click on there and uh, we'll tell you everything about everything. All right, so number 19 on the list is a self-drive tour is an awesome way to see Fiji. So this is sort of segueing off what Robin's just said um, right now, but Fiji is actually a really good country for doing a road trip. So the main island, uh, Biti Levu, is it's pretty big and there is one main road that sort of goes around the perimeter of the island while there are some smaller roads that take you inland as well. But this is a really awesome way to explore Fiji at your own pace, at your own leisure, just sort of checking out some of the different resorts around Viti Levu itself. There's also a few different cities and towns which are really interesting. And even inland, there's some really awesome Fiji, Fijian uh, villages and some awesome like highland scenery as well. So definitely that is a really cool alternative way to see one of the South Pacific Islands by doing your own sort of road trip. And we do have loads of articles on Fiji Pocket Guide about how to drive safe, lots of driving tips as well. So make sure to go check those out. All right, tip number 20, two third there guys, two third there. <laughs> Um, is don't exchange money at the airport. Now let me tell you a story. One day I arrived in Fiji and I had some cash with me that I wanted to exchange. I really needed some cash to pay for the taxi towards our resort. So I did exchange money at the airport. I exchanged 500. I got um, some money uh, from the exchange. And then on the very same day in town, I did exchange 500 as well. The difference of how much money I got was $80 on only 500 bucks. So it's a huge amount of money. Don't exchange money at the airport, especially don't exchange money in, in your overseas airport. Exchange it when you arrive in Fiji. Learn from our mistake. When you arrive in Fiji, you make your way to Nandi and then you exchange your money there. Big difference, major difference. Yeah. Okay, number 21 is make sure you know what is actually included in the tours. Now, at first glance, some tours look like they include everything. They include all the jet ski rides, they include the scuba diving with bull sharks or whatever. But um, do make sure that you really have a, a close look at the description of tours or even ask as well if you're unsure like what is actually included. Usually if it says like you know, that you can have lunch on the beach, that might mean but you have to pay for it extra on top of the tour. Um, so yeah, just make sure that you do double check what's included. As a general rule, um, if you're going on a tour and there's the opportunity to use, to use um, water sports gear that is non-motorized, meaning usually snorkel masks, fins and kayaks, kayaks or paddle boards for instance, they're usually free, not always, but they're usually free. Um, and then if you use any motorized water sports equipment like jet skis or um, what's another one? Uh, those things in the water, I don't, can't remember the name, <laughs> deep blue? You know those things that you, you just and yeah, you go just, in the water? Yeah, the sort of snorkel aid machines, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember the name. Yeah, door. so if anything, or, or even like little speed boats or dinghies or whatever, they will be also, you'll need to, and um, you'll obviously need to pay for those as well. So just, just double check what's included. 
All right, number 22 is take every opportunity to try the local food. Fiji is a foodie's paradise. I mean, look at my face already. I'm just smiling like a baby right here. Oh my God. Um, first, if you go to a local market, you're gonna see so many different fruits and vegetables that you've probably never seen in your life. But even the thing that you know already, like the bananas, you're gonna find some smaller bananas which, ex which taste so good. The pineapples taste absolutely fantastic. Unlike anything you've ever tried back home, I can guarantee that because they, well, they're just ripening on the tree, they're not ripening in the boat going to your country. The food is fantastic, just from the market. After an all the little local shop and local kind of eateries, you're gonna have such amazing, savory, amazing food. Um, stunning seafood, delicious, amazing Indian food because in Fiji there is a big part of the population which are Indo-Fijian which basically are immigrants from India that came to Fiji and they have been here for three, four, five generations and their food is phenomenal. The Indian food in Fiji, fantastic. And most of the resorts, especially the world-class resorts, have a world-class restaurant as well. So there is so many food. So just go in Fiji with the intent Mm. to eat some of the best foods ever and you will be absolutely mind blown. So we try try food, food. <laughs> just try. And try something different. Don't eat twice at the same place. Just yeah. try try plenty. I agree. Okay, so 23 on the list is that the locals are extremely friendly. So this is obviously a good thing. Um, it's not a weird or creepy thing, but um, yeah, the locals, especially the Fijians, are always really, really friendly and always keen to talk to people and tourists. And especially if you're traveling with kids, it's usually pretty common for um, the Fijians to sort of come up to your kids and sort of like, you know, uh, maybe pick up your kids or touch them or start playing with them or whatever so just uh, just know that this is like a normal part of their culture it's nothing to be uh, like scared about or anything um, and yeah it's usually not a country where you want to be too introvert and not talk to anyone you know people usually if you're staying in a village um, a lot of the locals will stop you if you're walking by and uh, ask you loads of questions and stuff so sometimes we even stop by by a bunch of youngsters that say hey can I take a picture with you just just, yeah. just for fun they just do a pose and take a picture and that's fun. yeah so it is a very it's a really refreshing social experience and just yeah be prepared to talk to lots of interesting people that's what it's all about really yeah, yeah. all right number 24 um, it's a very simple and short one uh, it's always have some cash with you um, you've, you're gonna need some cash as soon as you leave the resort um, on the in the resort everything is gonna you know everybody's gonna accept a visa card and MasterCard and, and in, in cities quite a lot of people will uh, quite, quite a lot of shops and outlets will but you will figure out very quickly that you know you need it for a taxi you need for this or for that you know like a small store right here you you need some cash so make sure you have um, uh, you know a bit of cash with you at all time and you make your life much easier rather than just feel like you miss out on an opportunity or on that coconut bun that you really wanted to buy and <laughs> you had to have cash don't miss out on coconut bun <laughs> number 25 is also a pretty short one but this is try not to book too many things in advance and the main reason for this is that we've actually found that a lot of activities once you arrive in Fiji is advertised a lot cheaper than when it's advertised overseas. Um, obviously, uh, yeah, usually over planners will find this tip pretty scary, but uh, yeah, it's, it, you'll be surprised as how how much you can actually save when you do sort of you know do things a little bit on the fly, do a few activities here and here. You don't know who you'll meet who actually will suggest something cool and quite you know inexpensive to do so yeah don't don't o overload yourself with expensive activities you can obviously book one or two here and there but um, yeah there's obviously a lot cheaper prices to find all right next up is uh, don't rely on the free Wi-Fi um, I know you've lo you love to be connected I, I know you know you really want to you know be on Fiji pocket guide at all time you really want to make sure that you know you have up-to-date tips and uh, you want to make sure that you post some pictures on Instagram or on Facebook. I get it, but you're in Fiji, you're on an island, um, the Wi-Fi is not good. Pretty much anywhere, even on the fancy resorts, the Wi-Fi is not great. Um, usually you have a limit on how much you can use and it's not that fast. But luckily, there, there is some really good uh, local kind of um, operators for phones and everything, and we compare them on Fiji Pocket Guide to help you out if you want to get yourself a SIM card for the time you're here. 
but just know that don't rely too much on the Wi-Fi. You may have to either use roaming, either unplug, maybe just to, you know try to see how life is without the screen for a little bit, or um, or you can get yourself a local SIM card. But yeah, free Wi-Fi, it's not perfect. All right, next on the list is make sure that you have a travel adapter for Fiji. Yep. Um, so the travel adapter in, well, the, the power points in Fiji is type one, which is the same as New Zealand. It's the same as Australia, uh, quite a lo lot of the other South Pacific islands. Um, I think, maybe, is it China as well? That I think it's China has type one as well. Yeah, so um, make, sure, but... obviously if you want to charge all your devices, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty obvious tip, but I feel like sometimes it needs to be said. But if you do want to charge any of your devices, make sure that you do have this Type 1 um, travel adapter. And we do have an article with a load of different uh, recommendations, um, especially some of Amazon, which are pretty easy to get. Um, and also um, be aware that, um, yeah, of the different electrical current in Fiji, which is 20, uh, 240 volts AC, 50 hertz. Um, does that make read sense? the article if you, <laughs> if you want to know that. Read the article. We've done all the research for so, you. So yeah, if you if you could, usually if you're coming from America, they use a different voltage system. So you will need to make sure if you're coming from America that you have um, also a converter as well as a travel adapter. All right, we are almost to the end. Tip number twenty nine. Know what you can take home with you. Um, so there is a lot of souvenirs that you can buy in Fiji and some really amazing handicraft and you know some beautiful necklace made of, of seeds and, and wooden stuff and uh, biosecurity for example like Australia, New Zealand is pretty quite tight especially with anything to do with seeds or plant stuff and, and so know, know what you actually can take home. There are some research and you need to do first knowing can I take these beads necklace back to my home country in Australia, for example? Can I? And just make sure that you have a look at that um, because, well, you know, every single time we fly back from the islands, you can see at the biosecurity, some people are being stopped and, you know, they're not taking their souvenirs home and that kind of sucks. If you bought it, you kind of yeah. want to take it with you. So know what you can take home. Some items are made of wood, some items are made of seeds. Some items, you know, you can take corals or seashells or any of those kind of things. You can take that. So, you know, don't collect them because that you're not going to be able to take them. So just be aware of all those things so you actually are able to keep your souvenirs. And, and yeah, if you find something really pretty that you don't think you can take, take a picture of it and, uh, you know, at least you know you can take that home with you. All right. So last on our 30 tips for traveling in Fiji, we have tip number 30, make the most of Fiji Pocket Guide. Is that some shameless promotion? <laughs> <right? laughs> no. That is a bit of shameless promotion, but I mean, we do, we have made this huge travel guide for Fiji for you guys to help you plan your trip to Fiji and sort of um, find all the answers to probably all those little niggly questions you had like, oh, can I do this in Fiji? Can I take that to Fiji? Uh, where can I go in Fiji? Because like Robin said, Fiji is 333 islands. It's a pretty massive um, uh, yeah, collection. Country. <laughs> Sorry? Country. Country, yes. It is a pretty <laughs> massive country. So, yeah, so we do have all our destination guides on Fiji Pocket Guide. We have all our travel tips articles. We have an accommodation section so you can check out and compare the resorts. But there's also lodges to stay in, there's eco stays, there's home stays, holiday homes. You can even spend some time in, a, in an actual Fijian village. We've done that ourselves, getting an Airbnb in one of those villages for instance. We have a things to do section so you can check out all the crazy activities you can do in Fiji because it's not just about staying by the pool. And we have a transport section so you know how to get around and obviously you need to get over water quite a lot of the time so it is handy to know about all the ferries and all the flights and stuff like that. And finally, we have a trip ideas section with loads of different itineraries. That's my favorite section. Yeah, so you can basically not even think about what, yeah. what to do or where to go because we've done all the work for you making all these itineraries for different lengths of stay, for different travel styles. So we have ones for families, we have ones for luxury travel. It's just so easy. You just pick travel. the one, you just yeah. pick how long you're getting, what's your travel style, and then you all sort it. And, and it's all free. We're not booking you anything you you do the bookings yourself 
you just follow our tips. Or oh, just, just follow us on this channel right here where we're going to be actually bringing out more of these videos and tips on how to travel in Fiji. So yeah, that's always good as well. So make sure you click subscribe. Exactly. All right. So thank you very much, guys, for watching these 30 tips. Oh, that was 30-ish. And tips for traveling in Fiji. We hope that that was super helpful to you. As Laura said, click like, click subscribe just to say thank you to us. And uh, check out FijiPocketGuide.com for much more information. We go there super regularly to keep everything up to date so you know what you're in for for your trip to Fiji and your holiday to paradise. Thank you very much. Bye bye. See ya.